first of all, always make sure your students know when your office hours are. They need to know the times that they can come in and expect to find you in your office. Um, I do strive when I'm in my office hours to have a little more relaxed attitude than when I'm in the classroom. You need to be a little different, not a totally different person, but a little different. You don't want to be quite as, you don't want to seem quite as in control as you do. In the, in the classroom, you've got a number of people. It's a group of people you're trying to maintain control over. You are not trying to do that when you're in your office hours. Instead, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It should be a very friendly sort of back and forth between you and the student, especially if there's a problem. Um, the student's been found cheating or you think they have been misbehaving in class and you want to address the issue. Maybe you've asked them to come into your office hours or maybe they're looking, uh, they have a problem with their grade and they want to talk to you about it. Why do I have this grade? Could you please explain it to me? They will be much more open to you if you talk to them like just another person. Just be very friendly, very open without being their friend. Mm -hmm. You can't just make yourself automatically their friend. There's a little difference between being too friendly. You know, you have to kind of maintain a professional sense. I mean, they should still think you're the teacher without being too in charge. Um, I always like to say um, when I'm thinking about my students that I'm student-centered, meaning I'm concerned about them. If I show that I'm concerned about them, that what they care about, I care about, mm -hmm. they respond to that naturally. Um, a good example probably would be um, earlier this week I had a student come in. He was concerned about his grade and he wanted to talk about some useful things he could do to improve his grade. Um, I sat, I faced the student, I didn't stand over him and we sat there and we chatted. I didn't have him sit across from my desk so that I had to talk over my desk. Instead, I had him sit next to me so that there wasn't anything in the way of us. And he showed me his paper. I looked at it. I had him participate in visiting with me about it. Anytime he expressed any kind of concern, he was obviously upset or worried about something. Um, I expressed the same, you know, I didn't, I didn't laugh at him. I didn't get um, overly emotional, but I said, okay, no, you're concerned about this. I'm concerned about this. How can we help you make the kind of grade you want to make? That sort of thing. Um, Another instance, though, where you may have more trouble is if you've had a student that has been cheating. Now, this is a problematic. A, and you may not think this, but this is true, do not accuse the student of cheating. Do not just come in and say, you're a cheater. You may feel that. You may think that. Do not say that. <laughs> okay, the reason why is you immediately set the student on the offensive. When you set the student on the offensive, it becomes a fight. You may end up yelling. Um, the student might throw things. I mean, they can get violent. You might find yourself calling the campus police. You may get angry letters or calls from parents. That's not the way you want to handle that. Um, you need to kind of decide before the student comes in what your position on this is. Um, and honestly, I have found that giving the student a chance to make up for it, meaning they have to work really hard to make up for it, and they may still walk out with a zero for that particular assignment, but giving them a chance to make up for it often affects them better. Um, instead of just failing for the entire course, which you do have the right to do, but instead of just failing for the entire course, sometimes being kind will reach them and sometimes you will be able to actually reach that student. And you know, I'm not saying make a student guilty, but if a student says, you know, that wasn't right, and this student has, or this teacher has actually been kind to me and shown me that this was not right, they may avoid doing that in the long run, that this is the last time they do that. And um, I've actually had that happen. I have three students in my current class that were found cheating in my last class, and they're still taking my class because I was kind, and I gave them the chance to make up for it. Um, and they're doing very well, um, very well. They're good students. They just had to kind of get past that particular barrier. Um, so it is a different kind of atmosphere when you're talking in your office. Just just have a different mindset. I need to be show my students I'm concerned, um, I care about them, a nurturing kind of um, idea. Otherwise they'll think you're distant, that you don't care, that you don't listen to them. And this will be reflected on your student evaluation. So you'll see this sort of thing. Another thing, if your student emails you and they want to meet, 
because your office hours are not convenient for them. They have another class, they're working, something comes up. Make sure that you are available. Of course, you're going to have your own scheduling conflicts, but try and be available to the students outside of just your office hours. The open door policy is really good. The fact is you have to listen to it, um, especially if your student is of the opposite sex. Um, and this is where you are basically making sure you're not going to end up in a bind. When I say you're not going to end up in a bind, I mean that you could face some kind of legal problems. Um, and what the problem is, as much as we want to believe that every person in the world is nice, not all of them are. And most of our students will be. I prefer to walk into my class believing all of my students are brilliant, wonderful, good people. But there are those people that will take advantage of you. And maybe they don't have a good grade in the class and they want to get back at you for whatever reason. And if you close that door, like I said, especially if they are the opposite sex, um, they, no one else is there to witness it. And if they come out and say, well, my teacher did this, my teacher did that, whether or not it's true, people will listen. And it will affect your job. You might lose it. Um, open the door, keep the door open. If you have a line of students and what you're talking about with the current student in your um, classroom is private, have your students wait down the hall so they can't hear it and keep your voice down a little bit, um, but still keep the door open. If you have a student again that's cheating to cover yourself again, make sure you don't get in a bind, have another person there. When I say have another person, I don't mean just any old someone. I mean someone else who is also teaching. It could be... Um, a professor that has time, it could be another TA, it could be someone from the main office, I mean just someone who's a technical assistant, someone who works for the university though, someone who's basically on your side. And they need to be someone you don't think is going to butt in. They're just there to be a witness to make sure everything goes smoothly. So if things go badly, you will be okay. Um, and keep records of everything. When that student comes in to visit you, make notes. Have a spiral on your desk or something like that and make notes about what was said, what happened, the date, the time, um, because you can bring that stuff out um, if you end up in a bind, if, you, um, if the student tries to bring charges either legally or just through the university against you and say this teacher wasn't fair, they didn't do this, they didn't do that, you know, you've You've covered yourself. You're making sure you're not going to get into too much trouble mm -hmm. um, because you've kept good records, because you've paid attention to that, because you've kept your door open, because you've had a witness if you need one. Um, these are all really important things to think about.